Is the government letting down renters? Four years ago in their election manifesto, the Conservatives promised a better deal for renters. And earlier this year, the Renters Reform Bill was introduced, a proposed law that they said would transform private renting, including a ban on evicting tenants for no reason at short notice. But the bill still hasn't been passed through Parliament. Today, charities are urging the government to get it done before the next election, warning that the delay risks causing more avoidable hardship and suffering for renters. So, is the government letting down renters, Dr Shola? Are you a renter? Are you uh, a landlord? Do you have skin in the game, as they say? My skin in the game is that um, <laughs> everyone should know that the Conservative Party have been letting down the citizens of this country in every aspect, and this is no different. If they have, if they promise to do something, and there's a bill which they've not passed, and you bear, bear in mind that charities have worked closely with landlords and tenants, as I understand it. With tenants, it would mean abolishing this Section 21 no-fault eviction, moving to a simpler tenancy structure, which provides more security for tenants. But also on the landlord side, it, g it still gives landlords the opportunity to record their properties, especially when they want to sell it or move in with close family, but allows them to be able to take it back if, for instance, in cases of antisocial behavior. So they, if communities in our society have come together to reach uh, you know, a united front on how both landlords and tenants can can move forward with renting um, uh, properties. It makes no sense that people this have is, done the hard work and the government, government fails to. This is a government bill. It's a government so bill. So it's a government bill which is advising getting rid, trying to get rid of Section 21 no fault evictions. Mm -hmm. It's come from the government. They are trying to get it through. No, you they're know, Michael not. Michael is trying to get this no, through. No, no, so no. They've got through all the things that they should. They had no business getting through. So what's the delay on this one? This takes another reading, mm -hmm. and then they read it, and then it's on the way to becoming. Are they, are they, are they difficult? Is that difficult? Are you suggesting it? that they have no intention of, of getting it? That through? is exactly what I'm suggesting. That's exactly but what I'm saying. This has widespread support. This bill. A, and that, then why parties. haven't they done it? If it's a win-win, why haven't they done? It? Look, the bottom line here is. Tenants, some tenants may want to keep renting, some tenants want to buy their property. If the government had done its job in the first place in creating a better housing situation, economic situation, then tenants would be in a better position to do more. Landlords would be in a better position to do more. So not only are they pretending to give with one hand, they're actually just taking. I have zero, so zero much trust in this has government. Gone into this bill into trying to find that line between landlords and tenants, Christo, which allows them both to have a degree of power and to improve the relationship between the, the two of them. You know, do you think it's going to happen? Do you think it's the right move? Is the government letting us down? Well, I am a buy-to-let landlord. I think that the government has actually been letting down landlords, actually, and I think that successive governments have let down renters and homeowners by not building enough properties, which everyone knows is actually the solution to all of the problems that we have, mm -hmm. which all of this is fiddling around the edges. Now, the Conservative Party, what they have actually done, and I'm no massive fan of this government, but the Conservative Party have made it more difficult for landlords by bringing in, by removing tax breaks for landlords, meaning that if you are a private landlord, you now have to pay tax on your full uh, amount of rent rather than getting tax relief on and your mortgage. Now, the reason that that is, is, is making it less profitable for landlords means that um, not only are we seeing more and more landlords leave the market, but my worry is that this bill will see the same happening. I, I always listen to that argument from landlords, the fact, you know, it will have to leave the market. The property won't stand empty. It will still provide a home for someone because they'll sell it on to either someone who lives in it as their own home or who rents it out but, to but other if, people. But if these measures are designed to help renters by removing a home that would be bought by someone else who'd probably mm -hmm. live in it, mm -hmm. that will reduce the amount of rental stock, meaning the amount that people will pay for a rental property will go up because supply will lessen, demand will go up, prices will go up. Now, some of this bill is OK. I think actually having a minimum standard for property, my properties are really nice and I want people to stay in them. I what genuinely do. But 
<laughs> but I'm afraid to... No, but it's, 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 it's true. My, my tenants have stayed for years at a time. Because Just I one question to. for you, Christo. If your mortgage goes up, do you pass that straight on to your tenants? Um, when, they, when COVID happened, I didn't. I've given my tenants one uh, rent rise in the last three and a half years. OK. And that's it. But can I just say very quickly, pets and housing benefit, I should be able to choose whether I have people who well, come in with that's part things. of the rent reform yes. bill, is that you would, unless you've got a very good reason, you wouldn't be able to uh, deny people the right to have that's pets wrong. in their homes. Okay. Yeah, I would have an issue with I wanna, that too. I want to get some context now uh, from, from a different voice. Uh, joining us now is Jenny Lamb from the housing charity uh, Shelter. Jenny, I know Shelter has played such a big part in, uh, in, in forming the rent reform bill and also pressuring the government to try and get this bill to go through. How important is it to the people that you represent, to the people that you're trying to help with their situation, whether it's renting or, or homelessness? This is going to be a, a crucial piece of legislation that will really help uh, rebalance the scales uh, of power between landlords and renters. Um, we really welcomed the bill when um, it was announced. Um, and we are really concerned that we're seeing such a delay. No fault evictions are now a leading cause of homelessness. So they do have a real direct impact uh, on the lives of renters um, and on the number of, of people facing homelessness in England. OK, so the Section 21, the no fault eviction, you know, that's where a lot of the attention's been on this bill. Just what difference does that make in that power balance between a landlord and a tenant? What the system that we have right now means that landlords can evict tenants for no reason. So essentially just at any any reason at all, but they, they don't have to give a reason. Um, that means that tenants um, struggle with, well, essentially fairness uh, in, in the system. It means that there is this kind of spectre of a no-fault eviction hanging over people's heads at, at, at all times. We know that if tenants... Uh, complain about the conditions of their property, for example, they are uh, more than two and a half times more likely to be served a no-fault eviction notice. So what it means is uh, the, the scales of power are very much balanced in the favour of the landlord currently, and tenants can't challenge their landlord, ask for uh, uh, improvements to their homes, um, which we know that a quarter of private rented homes in England are what would fail the decent home standard. Um, so people have real reason to be asking their landlord to make improvements to their property. But right now, the result would be that they will more than likely uh, end up with a no-fault eviction if they did. The same goes for rent increases. They can't be challenged right now because the effect would be that the tenant's more than likely to be asked to leave their home as a result. I mean, Shola here has said that she believes the government has no intention of trying to get this through. As far as you can see, what's the likelihood that this bill will pass, that we'll see an end to Section 21 notices? It's it's really hard to know. It's not clear why the bill's been stalled uh, or why the governments have uh, stuck renters on the back burner. Now that ministers are back from the uh, conference recess, they need to prioritise the bill to progress it through Parliament. Um, we know there's a general election coming up and it would be in the government's best interest to not ignore the 11 million private renters at this time. OK, Jenny Lamb from Shelter, thank you so much. You know, Christo, I think that it's really interesting what Jenny says there, because whether you like it or not, if you have that power to evict people with two months notice, however benevolent a landlord you are, you still have the whip hand and that's hanging over the relationship the whole time. I agree that you shouldn't be able just to evict someone for no reason. I actually think that part of the bill I, I can understand. But I do think that we should remember in the context of this conversation that someone who has bought a buy-to-let property has put down a minimum of a 25% deposit down on that property. They are the ones subject to the market conditions of the mortgage. And if that goes up, then I'm afraid that a lot of landlords have to suck it up. Nearly half of landlords only have one property. 85% only have two properties. So this idea, this constant demonisation that I think we see of landlords, that they are these huge, uh, great multinational companies that have millions in the bank is simply not true. And the more landlords that leave the market, the higher rents are going to become. Let's, let's, let's take some calls, Shola, if we can, just to uh, hear what people have to say. Uh, Steve's in Essex. Steve, are you a landlord? Are you a renter? What's your situation? 
Oh, hello, Matt. Uh, nice to speak to you. Uh, my situation is I've got power of attorney over my mother, and so has my sister, joint power of attorney. It's my mother's house that we're renting out, and uh, my mother's in a care home with dementia. So you sound, um, like, you sound like what's we've... described very often as an accidental landlord. You've ended up in this situation without really looking for it. Yes, yes, absolutely. But uh, I'm pleased to say we've got a lovely couple uh, with, with a nine-year-old daughter in there, but, um, you know, point I'm going to like to make is um, since the turn of the century, I think the population in the UK has gone up from 60 million to 69 million. And we're just simply not building enough homes. And we need uh, like state, uh, you know, council houses, council flats, and a hell of a lot more of them because there's the supply and demand is not, not there. Okay. Two of my let, let, with... Let's say the bill goes through and you lose the power to give people two months notice and repossess your property, get it back in your own hands. Would you welcome that? Or is that something you, you think you don't need? It sounds like you have a great relationship with your tenants right now. Yeah, we've got a great relationship with our tenants. And, and my sister and I have said they're such nice tenants. We could put that, we have put it up slightly. We could put that up another 100, 150 pound a month. If I was a greedy landlord, I'd say, OK, I'll kick you out and I'll go and get someone else who's going to pay me another £150 a month. But we don't want to do that. We, we, we like the people. Uh, we feel sorry for them. They cannot get on, on the housing ladder because properties are so expensive. So, I mean, you know, the real problem here, two of my friends, two of my friends, uh, uh, you know, did, were landlords, have got their own houses as well. With the interest rates going for the roof, there's no money in, in it from any more, so they, they, they've now sold the properties. So that's great for someone who's got the mortgage, who, who can get a mortgage to buy it. But what about the renters? The renters have been seriously squeezed out here. And I saw a, a program where there was like 20 couples viewing one, fighting over one rental property. You know, so this is all wrong. The government need to do something. They need to do it now. They're saying they're building these houses. They need to build a lot more. That's a long-term solution, Steve. It's very interesting, though. Thanks for your call, Steve. It, it sounds like you are, uh, you know, one of those landlords that, that bucks that trend of, you know, portfolio landlords with hundreds of properties making loads of money. You found it yourself in that situation without even knowing. Accidental landlord. Let's hear from Robert in Belfast. What's your situation, Robert? Uh, good afternoon and to yourself and to the rest of the panel. Well, lo lo long-term renters uh, in the general Belfast area would find it very difficult to get rent the, the conversation for the one simple reason, because the landlords now have caught on there's more money to be made in the, for Airbnbs. Now, some of the Airbnbs, you can pay up to £150 a day. So if you multiply that by seven, there's a 1050 a week. Why would you want to rent out uh, to long-term uh, renters when you're getting that kind of money in? And there is big demand uh, because Belfast is really progressing with a lot of visitors, so they need accommodation. I'm going to have to stop you right there. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, it's one of those subjects we could talk about all day. There's so much in there, uh, so many different situations. Which